So the first thing that I'm going to cover is the criteria for cesarean section. So these are the criteria that I use. There are different ones in different textbooks. And I like to use a combination of uh, different criteria from different sources. So what I've done is I've collated a few from different sources. And this is generally the list that I use. So let's go through them. First of all is 20 minutes of intense labor without delivering a neonate. So th that depends. If they've come down and they are in uterine inertia and you administer some oxytocin and they have intense uh, contractions after oxytocin without delivering neonate, then that's a criteria to go to cesarean section. But if they've been having intense contractions for like the last hour to two hours, and there's a, there's a puppy stuck there, then I wouldn't wait another 20 minutes. I would go straight to cesarean section. Next is 10 minutes of intense labor with the neonate present in the birth canal. Okay, so the patient's come down and you've administered oxytocin and the, the pup has, or the, the, fe the fetus has progressed into the, the vaginal vault and it's stuck there and is unable to come out and, you una and you're unable to manually bring it out as well, then I would then proceed to cesarean section. Next is obstructive dystocia. So I've kind of covered parts of this already. And this is where you are unable to correct or manipulate or pull a puppy out after 10 minutes. So I only give myself 10 minutes to try to pull a puppy that's stuck out, and if not, straight into surgery. The other thing, and this could be caused by relative or absolute fetal oversize, so that the fetus could be edematous and swollen for being there stuck, or even just could be a big fetus. The, the small dog might only have two fetuses inside it, so they're, they're bigger than, than normal. It can also uh, be caused by malposition, or birth canal obstruction. So something that is obstructing the passage of the fetus through and out. Um, that could be narrowing of the pelvis uh, due to previous fractures. It could be like a, a, an intra-abdominal mass or something like that that's, a, that's obstructing the, the, the vaginal vault. The next criteria would be is if, if primary uterine inertia was unresponsive to medical management, so you've tried um, IV calcium, you've tried oxygen therapy, you've tried correcting the glucose, you've given the fluid bolus and so forth, but none of that is actually resulting in uterine contractions. Then proceed to surgical management. The next one is primary uterine inertia that is unresponsive to medical management. And these are the things that Alex would have talked about, which is like IV fluid bolus, if they've got poor perfusion, correcting glucose, um, correcting or administering IV uh, calcium gluconate and maybe a dose or two of oxytocin. If there's no response there, then proceed to surgery. Dystocia of any reason with five pups remaining. So the sometimes what happens is they come down with large litters and they get halfway through them and they can't push out the rest. For some people, that is an indication to go straight to surgery. The other thing to consider is maybe they might be healthy and the, the, the patient might be healthy and the, the, the queen or the dam might be healthy and they have a previous history of dystocia and had a cesarean section before or what has happened is they are a breed that's prone to, to dystocia like brachiosphalix. In those patients then I would probably proceed to cesarean section as opposed to trying to, trying to move the, 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 pa the, the pups on with medical management. If the patient is systemically ill they're in shock, dehydrated or septic, then I would go to surgery rather than to put them through the stress of trying to push the puppies out further. Um, if they have discharges, so this is like vaginal discharges, uh, so 30 minutes after the passage of green discharge without a neonate being passed, uh, fresh blood from the vagina for more than 10 minutes, and purulent discharge from the vulva, which could be an indication of a pyometron. Lastly, what we have is indications of fetal distress. So if there is consistently low heartbeats where the heart rate is less than 150 beats per minute on ultrasonography or with fetal heart rate Dopplers, or if there's fetal death, there's no heartbeat or gas, or you see gas in x-ray, then that fetal death may not even trigger parturition to occur. So that's indications to go in there and get those puppies out. Overall, if you take a queen or a dam to cesarean section, 
the mortality rates of the mother is actually quite low, somewhere between one to two or three percent. And the risk though, the risk elevates the longer you wait to go to surgery. So what I do is I give myself a time frame and if medical management hasn't worked within a particular time frame, like two doses of oxytocin, then I'll go to surgery. Or, it's, or if there's obstructive uh, process going on there that I can't manipulate, then I go to surgery. If the patient's sick uh, or that the, 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 the mother is sick or ill, then I'll go to surgery. So I try to keep things simple. Um, otherwise, uh, it can become a complicated uh, and very difficult process to work through. So the one thing that I try to remember is that the longer that the mother remains in dystocia, the higher risk it, there is for her with anesthesias and also the higher risk there is for the pups or the kittens that are in there that might be suffering from uh, low levels of oxygen or from separation of the placenta from the urine wall and so forth. So you get higher risks of death of the fetuses the longer you wait to go to cesarean section.